All right, sorry about that, guys. I just got a little quick. Um, so yeah, volume shelves. We're going to talk about volume shelves today. Um, again, these are going to be areas on the chart where we know a high amount of shares were traded. Um, probably the most amount of shares traded within a range. Um, you can trade these like you trade any other levels, um, but you can trust that these levels will give you the biggest moves. Um, what you see on screen here is ES. These pink lines right here are the volume shelves. And as you can see, um, they're respected. You can play them uh, pretty much back and forth. Um, again, these are just levels where um, we know that a lot of shares were traded. Um, so we can, we can kind of uh, guess that there's going to be a lot of orders resting there as well, right? Because there's a lot of volume there. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of shares traded right there. So before we get into how to trade these, um, I'm going to go into how to find that. All right. Yeah, these things are awesome. Again, if you're on live trading, um, actually, if you've been on live trading with me any time these past, these past couple of weeks, um, you know that I use these volume shells uh, pretty religiously. I trust them. Um, I add to my position. Uh, if, if I'm already in a position, um, I believe we were uh, actually live trading this Friday and I was in a position here, um, uh, in a position short, and I was saying, I'm going to get even, you know, I'm going to add to my position at this volume shell. So I added my position at 45.39. Um, and this is where I sold my entire position uh, at 45.24. Um, Again, these are just my stop loss. These can work as stop losses. Uh, and you just play like as any other level, but you can trust that um, they're going to work pretty well. You can trust that the movement in between the volume shells is going to be fluid because, um, as you'll see in a second, the volume in between the levels, there's not that much volume. So you can expect fluid movement in between the volume shells. In between the volume shells, there's not a lot of shares traded, uh, typically. Um, so I'll go into more detail uh, about that shortly. First thing I want to do is actually find them. So remove all the drawings. We're going to start with the clean chart. We're going to go on the hourly. Wow, what a gigantic draw. Um, And I just pretty much, oh, I'm sorry. The first thing you're going to want to get is this indicator right here. Um, I'm going to give you guys a chance to take a uh, screenshot of this. It's right, oh, there's not even a, it's, a, it's an official uh, trading view indicator. So it's not going to be like a description, but right here, the fixed range volume profile. The fixed range volume profile. Um, I'll give you guys a second to take a screenshot of that if you need to or add it to your trading view. And if there's any questions at this point, feel free to unmute yourselves. Drop it in the chat. All right. So we're going to select the fixed range volume profile. Select it. And at first, you're going to see nothing, right? You're going to see not a thing. All right. Next thing you're going to do is select the range. Um, I like to kind of select, you can do any range you like. I like to go on the hourly because I'm a day trader and just uh, select kind of the most recent swing low and swing high. So I'm gonna start right, actually I'll go right here, right here, uh, starting from up here and I'm gonna get all of this price action right here. So you have the fixed range volume profile on, you click the top and what's gonna happen is, oh, I don't know what it is, shit. Uh, fixed range volume profile. There we go. You click the dot, and this line is going to appear. It's kind of faint, and I don't know how to change the settings on that. Um, but let me know if you can't see that. A line is going to appear. These are going to be your two anchor points. You're going to extend it and make sure you get all the price action you want. All right. <clears throat> and this is just simple volume analysis, right? There you go. We're just going to analyze the volume in this range. And you know what? Uh, 
I don't know how to hide the candlesticks. I can just hide the candlesticks. Um, oh well, that would be nice. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is uh, just grab a horizontal line here. Oh, come on. Sorry. I'm on my favorite screen right. So I'm going to grab a horizontal line here, and I'm just going to mark off the levels on the volume chart that showed up on the right here. I'm going to mark off the, the, the biggest volume space. So obviously, I'm going to take the point of control. Bam. That's a level. <clears throat> and again, I'm just looking for the biggest volume stick out of the clusters. I'm looking up here and I see this huge volume stick out of all this. So I'm gonna put one right there. I can just put a lock in. All right. And we're gonna go down. We're just analyzing this right here. All right. And again, as you can see the the uh the volume in between the levels, there's not that much volume. So then you can expect fluid movement between those between the levels, right? And I'm analyzing. So I see this volume cluster right here. I'm gonna grab that level. We go down, we go down. And if you guys can't see this, let me know. I know my colors are kind of bright, but um, you can't see the volume. Um, just let me know, I'll change the colors up real quick. Um, um, so I see this volume cluster right here. And I'm just gonna grab the biggest one right there. And I'm going down, I'm going down, I'm going down. So I noticed this volume cluster right here, and this is the biggest, this is the biggest uh, volume stick out of this cluster right here, right? So I'm gonna mark that. I'm gonna go down right here. This volume cluster right here, I'll stick one right there. We're gonna go down. Down. So that, in a nutshell, is how you find your volume shelves. You just select a range. You draw that visible range volume profile, and you just you just mark it off. Again, this is exactly why I didn't uh, make a PowerPoint for this, because they're so easy to find, and they're really just self-explanatory. Now, if you can just let's look at the price action now. We'll go on, let's do the one hour. So we'll go on to the 10-minute, uh, the smaller time frames, and just kind of see how it reacted to each, each level here. <clears throat> And you can see this is a 10 minute chart. So you come up, get rejected here. You can see these levels just being respected pretty well. This huge, nice, real fluid movement in between the levels. So these are why I like these levels the most because uh, I can expect fluid movement in between them. The volume shows that there's not a lot of shares traded in between these levels. Um, these work especially well on uh, ES, um, SPY. I assume they work well on every ticker, but I just I stick them on ES and SPY because these are what I need to trade. Again, you see that? And we'll keep going here as well. Um, now we'll do SPY. Uh, any questions before I move on to SPY? We're going to do the same thing on SPY, but we'll probably just select a bigger range. Again, it's really simple how to find these levels. Um, I use them as stop losses. I use them as entries, exits. They work really well. Um, you can see once they break, you see this is the 10 minutes. See how they get retested over and over? We know there's a lot of shares right here. See, a lot of a lot of volume. Again, this is the this is the 10 minute chart, by the way. 10 minute candles right here. Do you see what I'm talking about? How these levels look at this. We both flag right on top of this volume shelf right here. So again, if you guys know me, I, I uh, try to make my levels, I try to find them as easy as possible. I'm kind of lazy that way. So this this is a way for me to find levels that are like, uh, you know, that that I can trust and I don't really have to put that much thought into, right? I don't have to put that much, put that much thought into these levels. I can just draw the visible range volume profiles, um, stick it on the uh, volume sticks that stick out to me. And you can see right there, you can just see, look at this. And really, you can just use these volume shelves and that can uh, meet everybody right there. Uh, all right, there we go. And hey, again, so what, what, are, what are the current uh, indicators you have right now? I'm sorry. Oh, well, um, so on, right now, there's no indicators. Um, but the indicators I use are 
this. Oops, not this. Oh, you just drew just horizontal lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This okay. is my old chart, but what we're yeah, this we're just working on a clean chart right now. But as you can see, you could have just used these volume shelves and just trade the volume shelves. You don't got to like you can just trade the volume shelves. Like totally, I can totally just see making a point of just trading these volume shelves as your stop. You know, like look, look how well they're respected. And you saw how fast I found them. Like you just select a range with the visible range volume profile and. It's a wrap. So let's move on to SPY and we'll do the same thing on SPY. Um, oh, SPY right here. Oh. All right, I'm just gonna remove everything here. I'm actually gonna um, chart up SPY after this. Fresh zones, fresh everything, because um, at least months and month, I like to just clean up my charts and just rechart everything. So we'll be doing that here in a second. All right, so again, clean chart, and I'm going to move on to the hourly. And you can use this on, you know, any time frame, obviously. Um, I just like the hourly because, you know, I find my uh, supply and demand goes on the hourly. All right, so let's select the range. The spy volume shelves I like a little bit more because I can just there. Um, I I um, have it under regular trading hours. I trade spy under regular trading hours and uh, I chart spy under regular trading hours. And then um, it's ES that ch I chart uh, twenty four seven because I mean I, I don't have a choice. <laughs> um, all right, so we're gonna do. Uh, you know what? This is a pretty good one, but let me see real quick. Yeah, okay, so we're just gonna do this range on SPY right here. This whole range. Again, we're on the hourly. The fixed range volume profile. And we're just gonna start right down here. Right? This line is gonna appear. The two anchor points are gonna appear, right? First anchor right here. Oh, actually, let me uh, go right here. I wanna capture this as well. So let's turn over. Um, fixed volume volume profile. Right there. We're going to do this range right here. And we're going to get all this price action. All right. So your fixed range volume profile is going to appear on the left here. Oh, and you know, I should have uh, did this in the beginning, but here are my settings for the fixed range volume profile. It's not going to pop up like this exactly. You'll have to go into the settings. And what you're going to want to do is set your row size. I have mine to 175. And then your value area volume, I have mine set to 100. <clears throat> so I'll give you guys a chance to either stick that on your trading view right now or screenshot it or whatever. All right. Um, All right, let's go. <clears throat> so we're gonna do the same thing here. Again, we're just analyzing the volume. Um, I could have sworn there was a way to hide these panels, but I completely forgot how to. Um, okay, perfect. There we go. So I wanted to show you guys uh, this without the candlestick, so I don't have the candlestick this second. We're just analyzing the volume here, all right? So obviously we're gonna get the point of control. The point of control is the largest amount of volume in the range that we selected. So always gonna to wanna to mark that off, always. And um, I could even see making an argument for you know making it a different color so you're always aware. All right, so let's start at the top here and we're just looking at these volume clusters. All right, so out of this volume cluster right here, this is the biggest volume state. So, right there. All right, and let's keep going. We're going down, we're going down, we're going down, down, down. So out of this little volume cluster right here, 
this is the biggest volume state. So we'll go ahead and mark that off. And we're gonna keep going and we're just gonna analyze this volume. All right. So we had some fluid movement and it does seem like this is a pretty important level because we have this kind of fluid movement and then bam, a, a, a big stick of volume appeared, the biggest one out of all of this right here. So we're gonna mark it off. All right, let's keep going. Again, you can see, this is why we expect price to move between volume shelf to volume shelf fluidly because the volume in between these levels, it's not, there's not that much volume. There's not that much stairs created there. Um, it's until we get these, these random volume sticks, that's what we wanna pay attention to. So again, um, this cluster isn't that much, but you know, this is, this still kind of sticks out to me. So I'm gonna mark it off. All right. All right, let's keep going, let's keep going, let's keep going. Are you, so right are now, you more concerned about the blue or the total? The total, the total. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, again, this blue and white, this is just um, my colors. So the the blue is buy volume, the white is sell volume. But So this let's just make it look more traditional. There we go. This for now, this for now. So the blue volume is buy volume, the red volume is sell volume. But in this analysis, I'm just worried about the, the volume sticks that, that their biggest sticks, you know, the biggest sticks in the cluster. So that's why I expect the price to move between these levels fluidly because there's not a lot of volume in between. All right, so let's keep going, let's keep going. Um, yeah, this is kind of interesting right here. You know, let's go ahead and mark that. This little cluster, actually, no, it's not that bad. It's all good. We'll keep going. I see this one right here. Fluid movement and then bam, right there. Let's stick it right there. All right, and we'll keep going. All right, I definitely would expect us to hit resistance, but again, I will expect fluid movement and us for eventually to get to right here. See, not a lot of share shares. So if this broke, whatever level this is, if this broke, I would expect this to come like all the way down here eventually. Um, so, so movement is fluid until we get the biggest volume stick right there. I think so. All right, now let's keep going. Bam, right there, out of this cluster. Um, I do see making, yeah, yeah. Okay, this kind of sticks out to me as well. We got this fluid moving, but then we get one little, this thing right here. So I'm, I'm gonna mark that off. And we're just analyzing the volume here. And we wanna mark off the areas of volume that look interesting to us. To me, it's the ones that stick out the most. Um, so this kind of sticks out, but I'm gonna do this. And then kind of fluid right there. I like that. So I'm gonna just grab that level. All right, we'll come down right there. Oh, let's just keep going. Time show. Oh, my bad. Quick question, yo. How did you get your screen to look like that? The uh, the the white. Is, I'm sorry, the yellow and the blue. Yeah. Um. So you just go into settings. Um, and no problem, right here in the background, you select gradient, and then you select the two colors. Um, the one to the left is going to be the one on top, and the one on the bottom is going to be the, or the one on the right is going to be the bottom color. And just kind of stays until, yeah, I really like it. <laughs> Looks dope. <laughs> no, my bad. I mean, the, the actual, like, uh, the volume chart itself. Oh, my bad. They're talking about the colors. Sorry, I'm a little high. Um, so, uh, let's see here. You want this right here. The fixed range volume profile right here. Yeah, all right. I'll give you a chance to take a <laughs> I thought you were talking about the color. This is my bad, bro. <laughs> Not a ton of adult too, though. That's... Holy shit. All right, bet. All right. <laughs> Let's keep going here. <laughs> well, 
All right. And again, uh, again, fluid movement up until well, this last thing right here, this huge stick. So we'll grab that. And that. Oh, I didn't keep it in the lock mode. Bam. And that, in a nutshell, is how you find the ball. Again, this is why I didn't want to make a PowerPoint on these because it's so easy to find. This is a really like stress free, easy way to find your levels. Um, that's why I like them. Again, my trading stuff, it's all about just you know, making it easy. Not a lot to think about. I can expect once these levels to break, the next ones will hit. Now let's put the candlesticks back on. Let's go to a lower time frame. Let's go to my time frame, the one I trade, the three minute mostly, and look at how these hit. You guys can see levels once they break or hold. Look at that, guys. Look at that. Look where we bounced that started this rally. Look where we look at look at that. Look at where we uh fell from. So again, I can definitely make an argument. You guys can definitely make an argument. I'm just trading these levels. Again, 450. Once these two broke, man, you, like you can look, look at that fluid movement in between the levels. Again, once it hits these levels, you can always expect it, you know, to move fluidly in between them. You know, you can expect this consolidation. If it's bearish consolidation, go short. If it's bullish, you know, go go long. And use them as your stop loss. I find that using these volume shells as a stop loss work incredibly well. Um, because as you can see, once they break, it's pretty rare for price to, you know, we can retest it. See, they retest, but like once these levels kind of break or hold, it's kind of like no, you know, no looking back, right? Again, just a real easy way to find your levels. Um Look at that guy. That's that's kind of ridiculous. This is my preferred way to find levels. I trust these volume shells um, because, I mean, ever since I put them on my on my chart, like I just see it getting tested and bounced off of over and over. Um, it works well with my uh, existing supply and demand strategy. Um, it works well with my existing volume analysis. I mean, just look at that. This is beautiful right here. Bam, held that, held it as support, no looking back. Breaks, retests, no looking back. Rejected, rejected, come up, support, support. See, so I can definitely uh, <clears throat> see an argument on just paying the volume shelves, like just slapping these on your chart, and that's, that's a wrap. See consolidation just on these all day and then bam. Yeah, that's yeah, I I really like I really like these levels. Um so that's really well, I guess we can um do some hypothetical trades on them real quick. Hey, is BW BW, are you here? Yes, sir. Yo, what's up? Yeah, so we can that's do good. some uh, we can do some back testing too. You can do some hypothetical trades on these volume shelves. You can even go back. Um, let's see. How do you want? You want to do the replay? Uh, well, you have your levels. I, I, I have a different chart. That's why different levels. Oh, level. okay. All right. So I just want to um do some trade recaps on just these straight levels. But like, they kind of just they kind of just look how easy it is to trade these, right? You just like for example, um. Yeah, we broke. This is a three-minute chart, by the way. Once we broke it and held it as support, you could have went long off of the volume shell. Held it as support. Once we broke it, you could have went short off of it. Again, this is just real fluid movement, and I'm kind of like, wow. I mean, we can really just trade these volume shells now that I have see these without my zones. Um, it's much clearer to me. Um, yeah. So your existing strategies on how you play levels, um, how you play your your patterns. Um, with the volume shells on top again, it's just added conviction, added confidence to your uh, to your trade, right? Like, look, what once this volume shelf right here broke, retested. I mean, that was a wrap for spy. Like, look at that. Like, this one wasn't even like it wasn't even there. So again, yeah. So any any questions before I uh, move on? Now I'm just gonna uh, 
I'm just going to chart up spy real quick. Oh, yeah. um, we can just it in chat. All right, it sounds like we're good. Yeah, again, guys, um, Pyam, this just paper trade. Slap them on your chart, right? as you can see. It doesn't, it doesn't take long, um, to just slap these, slap these on your chart. And actually, I should probably move some more downside ones. Um, but I'll do that in a second. It looks like we're heading down. Um, <laughs> my God. yeah, we're looking pretty bearish right now. I don't see us holding a uh, holding this as support for uh, much longer. Yeah, if this 446 volume shelf breaks, I would definitely be short. Um, let's see, because the next the next support um, probably wouldn't be until. Jeez, this gap got filled, right? At like 442. What if this got filled? Yeah, we could be going down to 440. Yeah, it's not unrealistic to go down there. No, not at all. Not at all. I might I put I put all the targets of the upside on this one, so we're them looking down here. I think we can go to 423. <laughs> really? That yeah. would bro, that would make my day. Yeah, because it's still an uptrend, even if we drop to 423. We're still in yeah. an uptrend. Yeah. Um right here on Spy's weekly chart. And again, guys, um, that's pretty much it for the volume shelf lessons. I'm gonna go uh real quick on last, you know, any questions on the volume shelf. Can I add a fib on that volume shelf? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, my uh, yeah, this go again. The volume shelf they also go hand in hand with Fibonacci's. Um, a lot of trades that I take, like uh, the Fibonacci levels, they line up with these volume shelves. And actually, um, let's see here. We can actually do it right now. We'll we'll do a fib, we'll do a Fibonacci on the entire range that we drew, and we'll kind of see where uh, where the the fib levels line up. With these volume shelves, um, so we're going to so we went from here, and we're going to take it from the swing low to the swing high, and look at this, the six one eight lines up perfectly with this volume shelf, like almost to the penny, right? Like how picture perfect is that? Let me just make that. But look at that, guys. Um, so these, yeah. The Fibonacci with the volume shelves, they they it complements my strategy. Again, all every everything that I use, it just it all it does is complement my existing strategies. Um again, but if this range breaks, if 444 breaks, like that's a wrap, man. <laughs> if this range, oh my god. I would welcome it, bro. BW, you know what? If it went down to 420, like oh dude. And we'll go down there fast too. So like Again, we were just talking about it, bro. We like put a little bit more, so it's ready. I'm ready to to, uh, to slap some puts, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to slap some puts. Um, and again, look, the point five lines up kind of perfectly with this. With this, so again, these fib levels kind of just line up perfectly with these volume shelf levels. Um, trade them, slap them on your chart. Um, and you don't have to. Again, it works on every time frame. You can even, if you're more of a swing trader, right, do it on the daily chart. Right, select the entire range. Um, like go from I should go from the weekly chart. Go from COVID lows to all time highs. And actually, you want to see something super crazy on the Fibonacci. <laughs> again, again, guys, from here it's just gonna be a charting. We're just gonna be taking back and charting from here on out. Um, the volume shelf, the lesson is so small that yeah, we're just gonna be charting it up, back testing a little bit. So check this out, and then adjust it for doing it. So from the Fibonacci, oh, what the heck? Sorry, my shit's going a little slow. Let me start it over. There you go. So the Fibonacci from COVID lows to all-time highs on SPY. We bounce at the 0.5. Again, I don't know why adjusted for dividends. I don't know. There we go. And slap this right there. Okay, perfect. So this Fibonacci is from COVID lows to all time highs. And look where we bounce perfectly at 349, the 0.5 Fibonacci of this of this range. So 349 was the bottom, and then it 
pretty much the 0.5 call the bottom of, of this uh, of this downtrend here. And yeah, we are still in an uptrend. So I would expect us to find support. Where did you say, BW, around 420? Because that lines up with uh, this, this 0.236 level. Does it? Yep. Yeah, I got 423 or 422 or something. Yeah, I could see it, bro. Like go down like 420, wick down here on the weekly or daily chart to 418 and then just keep going on this rally. That would be amazing. Um, yeah, that, I would love that, bro. And if, it, if we went down to 420, then I would actually load up some long term. I could definitely see making buying some spot. That's five, but like, because if, if five went to 420, um, then stocks would go down. You know, they go down a pretty to a pretty good discount level for the long term. And if you haven't learned your lesson the first time, right? Like um, <laughs> when stocks were dying and everyone's getting scared to buy it, yeah, and then the all time highs, and you're like, dang, I want to buy it. So just remember, like, if it's dumping and you hear all these bad news, just remember that like, you get either average cost in or, you know, wait for the it price to go down to support, but don't be afraid to buy down there because we've seen this year alone when, when the market goes bullish, how quickly you can make money. Exactly. Um, and it comes with the added benefit that we're all traders now and we can read the chart. Like maybe back then we couldn't read a chart as well as we could, but now we could read a chart and potentially call the bottom of, of whatever downtrend that we're about to enter. You know, where other investors like myself back in the day would just, like you said, DCA in, we could now dynamically DCA at, you know, at support levels, you know, and, you know, if that support breaks, then we don't buy again until the next support. And then we just keep DCAing like that until eventually one of these supports fold. And then we start the rally again. I don't think this rally is over. Um, I can't imagine looking at this chart, this weekly chart on SPY and being like, yeah, um, <laughs> bear market. This looks like a pullback to me. This is giving me pullback vibes, if anything. Like a, a good, you know, a decent pullback. And if we slap some EMAs on here too, um, we can see that. Uh, let's see, go back to the weekly chart. Yeah, we need to retest these EMAs. We got to retest the eight on the weekly. We got to retest these. This the most important one, the bull market support band. To me, the bull market support band. That's the. Uh, the bull market uh, support man, literally. If this fails, then bull market is over on the weekly specifically. Um, I on the weekly, as you can see, once we're under the bull market support band, it is you know we're bearish. Um, once we're over it, we're bullish. So that's yeah, that's my long term indicator. If anything, um, again, yeah, let me just slap some. Damn. All right. So sorry, I was gonna um, draw some zones real quick on spy too before I forget. I want to be ready for Monday. Um, uh, let me. Uh, oh, this is a pretty important number. I should probably remember. So well, let's actually chart down to 420. Let's chart down to 420. So first thing I do actually is uh, go down to the daily chart, and I look for my daily demand and daily supply zones. Um, let's see the the um the combo I'm looking for for my daily supply zones and. Uh, and demand zone is this right here, the doji followed by like the gap up or like a huge bullish engulfing something. You know, it's got to be a doji like a, a something like this followed by a gap up followed by you know a huge bullish engulfing. So that's the zone. That's my daily uh, my daily this in this case my daily demand zone. So I'm gonna take it from the bottom of this doji, just the top of the doji, um, and that's it. I'm just gonna take that whole the wick, that whole wick. Uh, and actually, that's gotta be daily demand. All right, so that's how I find my daily demand zone. Again, if this breaks, oh, it's a wrap for it's a wrap, dude. If 440, yeah, that's that yeah, 444 breaks. If you're trading the daily chart, I don't really see anything for a while. I guess you could say this 443. We can probably catch some support there, but I don't, I don't, I'm not buying it. Um, the next daily, yeah, um, yeah, uh, yeah, okay. So, right here, this will be my next, this will be my next daily demand zone. So, this is actually 427 to 430. And I'm just going to take that whole doji right there. And actually, I'm going to take it right there. The next time it bounced. All right. And I think that's it. That's a pretty good range. I kind of want to go down to 420, like you said. 
right here. So this will be my next daily demand. I really doubt we'll go down here. But. So I'm gonna take this right here, this doji, just the bottom of the way to the top of the way. Right there. I really doubt it. this is what 412 yeah, man. I mean, we'll see. Um, where's 420? Yeah. Do I see a daily demand zone there? What do you have at 420? Like a fair value gap on a daily, or what do you got? What do you mean? What what uh where's what's your level at 420? What was 421. Let me see. Let me grab it real quick. Uh Oh right. I have, right. A, I have a gap to fill to at um four twenty one fifty six. Four twenty one fifty six. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm just grabbing these daily that gap right there. Oh, I see. Right here. Yeah, four twenty one fifty six. Oh shit! Fill that gap, and then we can keep going. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, because for I don't I don't think they're gonna because yeah, 420, like you said, that's a huge, that's a huge cycle level. Like I could see us bouncing there and wicking down here to the on the daily chart. You know what I mean? Um I'm actually I'm gonna take this one off because it's too close. That's too low, yeah. Yeah, that's way too close. Um yeah. Yeah, I can definitely see us going down here and just wicking down here on the daily real quick. And then um yeah, that yeah, that'd be amazing. I wanna load up there. I would definitely grab some uh some leaps right there, like Rudy was talking about. Rudy was saying that there's a couple he's expecting golden pullbacks. So yeah, yeah, I can definitely see it coming here. I can, I, I want to load up, so I'm gonna load up there. All right, so now that I'm done finding my, uh, oh, I gotta find the. Damn, we didn't put in a new supply. That's kind of crazy. We had this huge. Movement. Yeah, we did. So not... I think that just because we have the 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 lower um like targets doesn't mean that we can't go up. Yeah. Exactly, because we didn't put in a new supply yet in the daily chart. Not that I see. Like I want to see that combo, but a, the bearish version of that combo, we have not put it in yet. So maybe we do bounce off this daily demand zone, come up, and then we put in a new supply. Um, yeah, because I bet a lot of people loaded up short, and the market's gonna want to uh, be like, nah, <laughs> not that easy. Um, so where's the next supply zone? For on the daily chart, how I'm looking. Um, I know it's out there. Here it is. Yeah, that's that's a while away. Um, so I'm gonna wait for a new for a new um a new daily supply zone to be made before I get I can I think the downtrend is gonna continue. So without a new daily supply, I don't think. Yeah, I think we're gonna bounce for a little bit. We just bounce like bounce right here. Come put in a new supply and then we come down. All right, so now I'll go into the hourly and just find my hourly zones. And these are the zones that I trade. Um, so I'm gonna uh, grab this right here. This like this thing that that started this huge sell off. Um, I'm gonna uh, make a zone starting from the bottom and just wait, just to the top of it. Oh, there's my And uh, at the same time, I'm looking to the left here. I'm looking to the left here and I'm seeing what kind of price action there is. And I'm making sure to capture uh, everything that I want essentially in this zone. Because this zone has hella levels in it, right? It has this bounce off of it. If I drag it up, it has this, this right here. If I drag it down, it has all these wicks right here. Drag it up a little bit more. And again, you can make your zones as big or small as you want them. I kind of make, I tend to make mine a little bit bigger, especially since I started using the Fibonacci. If I draw a Fibonacci on an impulsive leg in my zone, that usually does capture the uh, the reversal point in my zone. So I do kind of tend to make mine a little bit bigger. Um, okay, so, okay. Yeah, I like that. So I captured this, this, captured all this. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, so I like that zone a lot. Um, I do see this bounce right here before this gap up, so I do kind of want to get this. Um, let's see, so 451 to 452. Yeah, I do want kind of want to get this, but um, let's see what else there is first. Okay, so I see this huge rejection right here. I kind of started this sell off. So I'm going to capture this wick right here. I'm going to go up, and now I'm going to drag this up and make sure I capture 
Remember I said I wanted this width somehow. Um, so I'm gonna, I dragged it from here, captured this whole width, made it go a little bit bigger, and I captured this bounce here. And I made sure to get this bounce right here. Yes, I do kind of make my zones a little bit different. Um, I think that's all I'm going to do for the top side because I don't see this. Yeah, actually, I, yeah, I don't. Okay, here, why not? We'll do one more level to the upside. I really doubt we're going to go this high, though, but we'll see. Um, I mean, this month at least, I don't think we're going to retest 455, 456 for a while. Um, let's see. So I'm going to, um, I see these bounces right here. I see this huge kind of rejection that started all this. And then I see this right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is draw a zone from, I see this book right here, and take all of this, grab all these wicks, grab these wicks, this, this bounce, this little consolidation. Um, I might actually grab this down. There we go. And actually, I think I'm just going to grab it. Um, so yeah. Just grab it all. And again, see, this is why this, I just make my charting easy for me. I see all these levels in this area, right? So I just make sure that my zone has all of them. And then once price enters here, I know that price is going to react to one of these levels, right? All these levels in my zone. I know price is going to react one way or another to one of these levels. So I just use my existing knowledge of price action and I make my trade based on that. Um, again, the Fibonacci really helps with that. Um, usually, I just use a Fibonacci now to make it pretty easy. Um, okay, I'll do one more up here. I think you guys can handle that. I'll just grab this wick right here, and I'll take it all the way down. You know, where? Uh, uh, well, it looks, yeah, it looks fine. Um, I'm more interested in downside targets anyway, so I'm gonna keep going down here. Um, all right, so I see this right here. And my hourly zones, I really don't care how close they are to my daily zones. Uh, when an hourly and a daily zone actually overlap, that's that's more confidence for me to go long or short. Um, that's going to tell me there's a lot of orders on a big and small time frame. So when they overlap, it's just more confidence for me. Um, so again, I'm saying that because I'm seeing this, and I see that's really close to this. So I want this, all this. See, I see all this little consolidation before we came down here. Um, actually, I think what I'll do is I'll drag it down a little bit. There we go. And so you guys can make your zones as, as again, if you understand, you know, what you want in your zone. I personally want a lot of wicks and a lot of, like, clean movement out of the zone. Or if we consolidate, I want it to look like, like this, like a real consolidation, not like wiki, you know, not, not like, you know. You always want real clean movement out of it. So yeah, this consolidation is fine. I guess it's kind of a lot. Um, we'll probably adjust it here in a little bit, but yeah, I do like it. Okay, that looks good to me. Um, again, these zones are super customizable. Make them how you want them. I know some people make them super, super small. Um, I make mine kind of big, um, but yeah, just do it, you know, do it how you see it. You can even you know go down to the 15 and 30 minute, draw them there. To make them a little bit more tight, I used to do that myself. I used to like, uh, like I'll I would draw a zone, go down to thirty and fifty minute, and um, and just kind of tighten them up. But over time, I realized that approach I would like miss moves, so I just decided to just make them as big as I want, be as greedy as I want. It's all about what price action you want in your zones, right? Like I want these bounces. I want this huge bounce. I want this stuff. I want this. See all these wicks right here. I want all that stuff in my zone. So again, once I know that price enters a zone, it's going to move in a big way, one way or the other. Um, again, it just makes trading super simple for me. I don't really gotta, you know, worry about hella different levels. Again, I just use the volume shells in my as my levels now. Um, yeah, trading is as simple as you make it, guys. Um, let's see. Right, so I see this huge move down. I see all this stuff right here. Okay, so for this zone right here, I'm gonna take it from the bottom of this flip right here. I'm gonna take it to right here to where we bounce. I'm gonna look to the left here and see what else I want. Um, you know, actually, let me drag this up.
Yeah, today. Okay, so see, I'm like, so, yeah, so I got this now, the top of this, this, and I'll just drag this down a little bit. Make sure I have this. And then that huge downside. Okay, yeah, I like that zone. Um, let's keep going here. Yeah, I kind of want to go down all the way to 420. Um, okay, so this is what, four, yeah, if this breaks, if this 430 level breaks, oh my God, I'm, I'm already short. Like if this, if this volume shelf breaks and this daily demand zone breaks, I'm definitely short. Um, let's see, let's find a little more. Um, okay, let's grab that right there. I see this huge rejection and this huge rejection eventually became support for us to launch and start this huge rally. So what I'm gonna do is take a zone from the top of this wick right here to the bottom right here. I'm looking to the left. I'm making sure I capture this wick right here. I'm probably gonna capture, oh, why is it going slow? Oh, that's way too big. Let's tighten it up a little bit. So instead, I went from the bottom of this wick to the top of this wick here, and I'll drag it down a little bit. Right there, I captured this. There we go. So yeah, I was gonna get, I was gonna start right here, but I kind of like this better to capture this. Um, we came up into it, and we kind of, kind of broke out, but we just got stuffed eventually. We came up, and then bam, right here, we got a huge bounce off of it. And again, as I'm making this data, I'm looking, as I'm making these zones, I'm keeping, I'm keeping forward price action and, and the backward price action in mind. Um, let's see, I'll see, I'll see this here. Okay, real quick, I'm gonna make this zone right here. Um, you see, we came up, caught a huge reaction. We had a huge hourly candle up to it, rejected. And then we also caught a bounce right here. You see this bounce right here? So what I'm gonna do is take a zone Actually, I'm gonna start at the bounce right here and drag it up. Yeah, I'm just making sure I'm, I got all this stuff in mind. All so, God, it's going so slow today. Um, there we go. So I got all the, I got half of this stuff right here. I got this. I got all these wicks. I got this huge bounce. Came up, retested a support bounce. Consolidated out of it, came down, came out of it, kind of got stuck. Hmm. Let's see. You know what I'll do? I'll drag this down a little bit. And again, see, this is how I, I kind of obsess over these zones. Yeah, I, you guys don't have to be as, you know, like me on these. I kind of obsess over them. So there we go. Um, let's see. All right. Yeah, that looks good. I think we're good. Um, all right, yeah, that looks good. All right. Let's see. Okay, I'll just grab one, I'm sorry. So we're down to 420 now. I'm gonna grab this zone right here, and I think that'll be done for SPY. Let's see here. I'm looking at this huge bounce up right here. Like we gapped up. So we gapped up out of this zone. I would kind of uh, some buys right here before, before continuing up. I do want to get that, but I want to uh, come back here and see if there's anything else um, around that level. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, so there's some stuff right here and right here. Okay. Um, Okay, yeah, this is yeah, this is a pretty important level right here. So yeah, I see this huge rejection right here. We caught a bounce out of it here. These wicks right here, and then this right here. So I want to capture all that in the zone. Uh, I'm gonna get from the from the top of this wick right here all the way to the bottom. So the goal of of setting these levels is like when we break one of the areas or we bounce off the areas, you know where the target is. Yeah, exactly. Pretty much. Yeah, my ultimate goal is to go zone to zone. I've been getting a little, you know, you see me, I'm getting better at it. Um, but yeah, that is the goal. Yeah, I just want to let people know in case they're, they're like, why, why are there so many zones everywhere? Well, 
the, the goal is to wait for a price to reach those zones before we we because we know there's going to be some volatility there exactly. and there's going to be some bounces there so we try to you there's when you start looking for volume or patterns or fibs once you have established these liquidity or these these areas of interest yeah you just once yeah once price enters your zone um you know it's going to make a big move one way or the other um oh i didn't get anything down here um yeah you know it's going to make a big move one way or the other um i you can draw them on any on any on any time frame i draw them on the hourly because i'm a day trader and i scalp in between these zones um yeah, look at this. This yeah, I just scalp in between these zones. Uh, you can if you're more of a swing trader, day trader, you can you can draw them on the uh, four hour or I know some people draw them or you can just use the daily. Like you can just use the daily zones and just trade those. But I'm more of a day trader, so I draw them on the hourly. So um, you know it does look like there's hella zones on here, but once you take it down to like the three minute, especially the time frame that I that I trade. You'll, you'll, you'll see how price reacts to these zones pretty pretty well. Um, yeah, so we're looking good on SPY. I just missed this whole area right here. So let me just grab this. Yeah, I'm just looking at, let's see. Yeah, this huge move up that was started off this floor right here. And again, I, I just wait for price to come into these zones. That's why I never, if you guys see me trade, I never, I never, uh, I don't really like to, take trades in these random ass spots. I wait for price to get to one of these zones. Um, but if I don't draw them on the hourly, if I draw them strictly on the daily or strictly on the four hour, I could be waiting all freaking, and I could be waiting all day um, or, you know, not even trade that day. But if I draw them on the hourly, it just works, you know, works the best for me. Um, all right, I think we're good here. Um, wait a minute. Let's see, when you go on a lower time frame. You can see how price reacts perfectly to these zones. See the break and retest like this. This right here is actually the um, I called this one on live right before lunchtime right here. This <laughs> it's funny. I might tighten this once it's kind of huge, but so price entered the zone. We consolidate, consolidate, consolidate. I don't think I took the position until we came up. I mean, it kind of feels like we're chasing at this point, right? But we came up out of the zone, and I saw that we were just being accumulated right here. We were just holding it as support. Um, what I actually did was draw Fibonacci. Again, this is why the Fibonacci works so well with my zone. I just drew a Fibonacci from this swing low to this swing high. And I took a position on this wick right here, a long position here. And then price consolidated. And then I did get a huge drop right here. My alert my stop went off. But when I went to go look at the chart, I saw that we were just at the 0.5. So what I did was actually add to my position at the 0.5 right here. And then, bam. I uh, I don't know. If, I hope somebody caught this because this was like 50% at the top right here. Um, but I got out at the 0.786 right here at the extension right here. But like this one, you know, this one pretty high. And then, yeah, this zone right here. And then, yeah. Yeah, this fluid movement in between the zones. Yeah, so again, um, yeah, I just make I make it as easy as possible for myself. I just I, I make sure to get all the, as many levels as I can, pretty much in these zones. I get kind of greedy with them, but it just works for me. Um, if you if you do decide to draw zones, just draw them how you you know if you know if you get the the theory behind them. If you know you know what you're looking for, you can make them as big or as small or as little or you know however many you want to do. But um, you just know once price enters there, it's going to make a huge move one way or the other. Um, I, I think we're good. Um, we'll just draw some volume shells for the downside, and I'm good on SPY. Uh, I guess we can. Do you have some strategies you want to test out, BW? Uh, well, I was just going to kind of go over um, my uh, assessment on SPY. and right. um, Yeah, do you want to share your screen real quick? Yeah, I can do that. All right, give me a second. Let me just draw the volume shells on on this one hour, and I'll pass the screen over to you, my friend. Um, let's see. So where's four? So it's a four twenty, right? So actually, what I'll do is I'll I'll take the visual range volume profile from I'm sorry, fixed range volume profile from the bottom here to the top here, and I'm just gonna get all this price action right here. 
Um, actually, I'll go up here. There we go. Um, and again, I'm just going to do it real quick. There. I don't know. Right, no. Yeah, sometimes it's locked. There. There. And again, I these volume shells sometimes like look, it lines up perfectly with my supply and demand zones. So every every strategy that I use, I make sure it complements an existing strategy I already have. Um, uh, so right there, there, there. This one lines up perfectly with my demand zone, and there. Um, all right, perfect. All right, man, I'm done. I'm done with spy. I'm passing it over to you. I'm done charging spy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Sure. Then uh, you gotta make me a host, and so I can share my screen. And uh, yeah, I won't take up too much of you guys' time, but uh, yeah, I'll cover a little bit. So. Y'all see my screen? Yes, sir. I can see All it. All right. Oh, All please, right. please stop sharing real quick, just in case. Um, wait. Oh, hold on. I'm the I'm the host now, huh? Yeah, you're the host. So but you're saving it to the cloud. It's fine. I, I mean, I mean, unless you want to have your video shorter, right? You want me to stop? Oh, no, no, I don't care about that. No, I'm talking about. I want to make sure I'm not screen sharing, so everyone everyone can see your screen, right? Because I just switched over. Yeah. Oh, oh, I I hope so. I hope. You guys, uh, you guys see my screen? You guys just type anything in the chat if you see it. Um, okay, Don. Right, Thank you, Don. Thank you, Don. All right, cool. Um, all right, like uh, about 12 days ago, right, I was kind of going over uh, my assessment of uh, futures, right, which is basically SPY, but including the after hours and pre market that we haven't taken out liquidity. Uh, I said we haven't taken out liquidity yet, right? Top, and we're yeah. going to be bullish until we reach there. Right? Right. Drawings. All right. 79 push up. We might, we might take out this by the end of this month. And after that, then we should wait and see if we rip through or if we pull back. Okay. I just want to give you a quick reminder. 12, about 12 days ago, I said that. And this is what happened. All right. right. We hit, we hit uh, the week level that I marked out. And then we kind of did a mini pullback. This monthly still has a lot of time. So this could turn into a hammer and we can go to all-time highs. So we also have to be mindful. So what do we do from here, right? On the daily, the reason why I was marking out um, those levels that I, I was telling uh, Raj is because we have to do gap fills. But real quick, I guess I could just show you what a gap fill is. If you guys don't know what a gap fill is, right? It's areas where we closed during the day that we did not um, touch. So right here, we haven't touched it. Right here, we haven't touched it, right? Because that's where we closed, red candle. We went everywhere, but we closed there. Has not been filled, right? Gap has not been filled. Right, so this is how it looks like when gaps are being filled. Gap is filled. All right, gap is filled. And we move up. This gap has not been filled. All right, so these we're just marking out areas where gaps are usually filled majority of the time. You see how they're getting filled? This gap was filled, right? So as price comes back up, we fill the gap and that's where we wanna that's how I mark out my levels where my targets are. Because once we hit that target, you see that rejection, right? So we have these other gaps right here that was not filled yet. So let's just see when price comes back up, do we fill these gaps, right? We go and we fill these gaps and then we create more gaps, more gaps. I just want to give you guys an idea of, of, of price filling the gap, all right? Just a quick little introduction to that. All right, so on the daily, where have we not filled the gap currently? This is where we are, right? We have not filled the gap. We filled it here, right? We filled it here. This is where I would mark out my first one, the op the closing prints of, of the day. Um, and then I would mark out other gap fills, right? Um, let's see. I had, oh, this is SPX. Oh, let me go to SPY. SPY daily, okay. So, so Let me uh let me fast forward to today. Okay, this is spy daily. I want to find all the gap fills that we have not filled yet. We haven't filled this one. All right. 
we haven't filled this one. That's the one I was saying that Raj, we're gonna hit at the end of the day, but we almost did 40, 446.02, but we didn't, we didn't fill that gap yet. We do have gaps to fill to the upside. We have that one that hasn't been touched yet. And then that one that hasn't been touched yet. So if we do make a move up, these are our, my first two targets, okay? But we still have a lot of gaps to be filled on the way down, which is why I am feeling like we could, well, this is a little too low, but we could, right? That's why it's, um, we always have to be uh, mindful of where we are gonna end up. The reason why I said 422 um, is because if you look at the whole trend of SPY, right? You could tell that we're in an uptrend now, right? But every pullback, right? So once we break structure, we break structure and close here. So every pullback, we want to measure. How much was this? Like 46, right? Oops. Let me stop this. All right. How much was this one coming up to here? 38, right? The pullbacks are like around 38 bucks. Right here to here, the pullback, 36, 36 bucks, right? And then we had two more as soon as we had our uptrend in October, right? We came here and then we pulled back 35 bucks. It seems ridiculous, but we did that in December. Again, right? From this pullback, 37 bucks. So is it is it um unrealistic if we fall about 37 bucks, which would lead us to our 421 gap fill? Yeah, well, that is freaking fire. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? We pulled back significantly in one month, one month on this uptrend, which creates this new swing low. Where is our swing low? We don't have one. So that pullback of $37 created this new lower high or high, higher low, higher low, higher low. But that was 35 bucks, 37 bucks. So we have a gap that we haven't filled yet. Right, right here. 37 and all the way down here, which would make sense, all right? That would make sense because this was an area of that we broke out of so we could retest the former resistance, okay? So that's that's how I, I um, mark out my targets uh, when we're filling the gap, especially uh, intraday. So let's say, um, let's just say going into yesterday, right? We have um the hourly candle first first i want to build my structure right so this is how i build my structure i usually find um fair value gaps first right one let's move this one right here all right and then we'll find this one right here too and there's one right here just off the top right or yeah i'll just do uh this one bigger i'll do this one here to here, right? And then I'll just do it here to here. Okay, so just a quick refresher on fair value gaps, right? As you can see, I just put it down where I see them, right? Big one right here that you see a mini touch. We haven't touched this one yet. This one, we see a little touch. So as price continues through, we see a bounce, right? It's fair value gap, I mean a gap. We touch this fair value gap, and guess what, what we do, right? What do we do when we touch these fair value gaps, right? They're levels, they're levels to, to lead us to our next gap fill, okay? So going into yesterday, or going into, um, what should we call it, Friday, Friday session, the reason how me and Raj caught that that move, I hope you guys caught it with us. God, I is, hope. I'm back, Caitlin. Yeah. God, I hope. <laughs> If we just mark out the previous day, um, the previous day candles, right? This is the high of, of the previous day and the low of the previous day. We can, we understand that this is an engulfing, a daily engulfing candle, right? Why is it a daily engulfing candle? Because this is how that, that, that candle looked, right? This is how that candle looked. We opened here, ended here. So what makes that, what color is that? As green, right? So where we, what did we start this day? Um, we started it right here. And then we pushed up, we broke the previous day high, and then we broke the previous day low. That's why Raj, when I said, when we're dropping, I knew that we're gonna hit at least 447.37, remember I said that? 
And then we came because we hit that. Now this whole candle is a bearish engulfing candle. That makes it engulfing candle because we broke the midline of the previous day. So if you turn on the midline of the previous day, right? Guess we bounced off the midline at open. All right, we came up, two up, created a higher low, came up. But once we broke this yesterday's midline, I knew that we're gonna make our way down to take out yesterday's low. So that's, I was trying to target this gap fill, but we ran out of time, right? We ran out of time, but that was, yeah, but that was, uh, that was approachable. All right, so let's say we delete this candle, delete this one, delete this one. All right, so high lows. Okay, cool. So um, let me just put, hide these indicators. You don't need to see this right now. Okay. All right, so to start the morning, right, we have this, this is where we had a gap, right? So when we opened up, I'm gonna make this in blue. You see how when we pushed up, we filled the gap right here at, uh, what time is this? At 7.05 Pacific time. So we closed right here. We opened up and we gapped up. And then right when we wicked at the gap fill, right? That's where people take their profits. That's the target. That's what I want. Those gap fills for the dailies that I mark out for a price to come and react. If we rip through, then we're going to go straight down. But usually you see how we, we react at these gap fills. So I was trying to wick right here, but we didn't reach it yet. So that means tomorrow or whatever, hopefully we can just take that out. But once we take out the gaps, then we can kind of reverse, right? That's what I'm I'm aiming for. So knowing that that's how I play gap fills, right? Where we could either play rejections off of or play as targets. Knowing that we have those gap fills that I mentioned, how I, how, how I drew them up, right? On the hourly, right? So if we have these levels, right? We bounce off of them. So this would be, once we fill this gap, I wanna see how we react. But once we come down, then this is that similar to Raj when he mentions the, uh, the, the shell volume shelf, once it breaks, Right, we can bleed out and we can go all the way down and fill the other gaps that have not been touched yet. But in between there, that's when we had to figure out where is like the um, where is the type of fair value gaps that hold it as support. So we go shelf to shelf to shelf, but reaching the gap fills as targets. Okay, so I hope that makes sense to you guys. I kind of wanted to cover like that measured move. I wanted to emphasize like that measured move on spy. How we have to create some type of new swing low this doesn't really this kind of counts this could be our swing low because this one ended up breaking this uh, this high so it's like a breaker structure for this being like a some type of demand zone right here but we kind of have to get uh i want to see price kind of create a bigger one so we can make a bigger move up till then we have so many gaps filled to the downside so if you guys want to make sure you mark out these targets right 431 and 421 these other ones maybe are a little bit unrealistic unless we get more bad news coming up but if we have bullish sentiment, right? Because just because this is a three doesn't mean that we can't get a morning star where we get a two down at support right here, a green two down, especially Raj, right? If we get a little mini green, uh, a green little candle right here, uh, right? A green candle. Let's make the phrase of the opaque space. Well, oh, actually, I found this new uh, tool, which is interesting. Um, Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, no, I saw something like this, but I'm trying to figure out how to use this thing. Maybe not a red one, but a green one. But you see how we can get a 2-2 reversal right here and then uh, and then go for the gap fills because there's a strong support here. Okay, so just because we marked down that bearish bias and we got a daily bearish engulfing, which is if this, you're a strat trader, we know that's a three down, right? But a three just means that we broke both sides doesn't mean we can't get a three, two, two reversal. Like I mentioned, where we get a two down and then we come back up because you can, some can argue that this is some type of stronger like resistance. We bounce here. That could be support. So just be mindful uh, until we really break down below 443 uh, that we can, we can come further down. This is the, the support I have right here, which I, like I showed you before, which I found through um, this hourly fair value gap right here, right? I had this hourly fair value gap. I had this hourly fair value gap here, right? And you see how we were consolidating here, broke up and then broke down. This is also another one right here. I could, I think this is the one I had during the, the, the day though. 
This is the one I had uh, on Friday, actually. This one, maybe? Or was it this one? Uh, let's see. Because, yeah, the trade that we had, yeah, it was actually this one, right? This is oh, the trade wow. that I had. Remember when I mentioned uh, that volume shelf that we, we were dropping? I was like, if we break here, we're going to dump. Bro, right. oh my God, yeah, I remember, bro, like, this volume remember shelf. that. Remember that? That was hard. because right here, this this volume shelf, this fair value gap that I had right over here, also aligned with my other indicators. That's why you don't use one indicator, you use multiple ones. I had the 200, all right, and the nine. You see how we broke that 200 right there? Dude. That's why I was like, I'm getting in. That was like 285%. Yeah, oh, dude. yeah, I should have loaded up, but and, and remember, I said that hey, if we break this level, we have to target liquidity, which was not only the where we bounce off this gap, but we created liquidity here, which was my target. That is my target. Okay, that was my target. And then I said, Where's uh, if we break pre market lows, we broke pre market lows, and then to make it a three down, we had to break the, this day's lows, and we hit all of them. Okay. Yeah. So that's just how I use my my uh, my fair value gaps uh, as kind of like the volume shelves, right? We bounced here, yeah. we held right here. So that's why I didn't really want to chase any calls right here because we had resistance already. I was saying that we have resistance. And as soon as we got back on live, when Raj came back from break, I was like, he's like, what are you looking at? I was like, I'm looking for puts. We broke market structure, right? Yep. <laughs> that was because when I was looking on a smaller time frame, the market structure, right? The market structure is if we have a swing low, like right here, this is the swing low. We broke this already. So I'm just looking for, for many bearish fair value gaps that we created like right here, right? Let me just do box. You see how we had a bearish fair value gap right here? So, and so we close above here, we're looking for just puts and this was a shelf. So we kept consolidating here and then we got puts right here, right? Maybe a little bit chasing, but we, we're protected by the 90 MA. We're yeah, using the um, no, yeah. Once that volume shelf broke on, go short on futures. You grab spy on the option and just do it. Yeah. So he came back at the perfect time. This is ten twenty six, right? You started back at ten. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So right here, we're we're waiting for a long time before we got in. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. We wanted to. Yeah. No, we need patience. Yeah. Yeah. We had, we had all the support on the left. We wanted to see it all break first. Yeah, because these are targets. These are all targets. Right. But the thing that we missed, though, remember I mentioned, is like, damn, we missed this. This trend yeah, line break trend at line resistance. Break. Yeah. We missed that, but we got another entry in. Um, and the reason why we didn't just get puts right away is because guess what? This is support. Just like we don't want to get calls right here. We don't want to get puts right here. So as we see like these weaknesses, and then on top of that, and one more thing that kind of gave me the uh the uh the confluence is uh once we got to here, right? Once we got to right here, um I had my volume up too. All right, let's like, let's just ignore the front half because it makes it all everything all small. All right. Whatever. I'm just gonna have to do it like this. All right. We see the volume, all right? This is the green volume. We start seeing a massive increase in volume. And I was like, yo, we're picking up in volume. All yeah. right. Our size below the midline, a volume picking up, support being broken and closed. All right. We got a quick fall. All right. We consolidated. I took profit here when I shouldn't have because we haven't taken this this target yet. So, but I was kind of tripping out because it was two hundred something percent. Right? Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, but this is the target. We have to go. For, like that's the thing that I'm gonna focus on next week is that yo, like if you really want to get the best uh, return, is that if you have your 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 risk, which is right here above. Here's your risk if it closes, and you have your target as these pivot lows. You, the only way you can maximize your strategy is if you let your either let your stop loss be hit or let your target be hit. If you're taking profits in between, then it wasn't a good risk to reward. It's like a one to one. If I take profits right here, it's a one to one, right? So if you have you have to calculate what is your risk to reward. If you, I trade two to one, I trade a one to one. My, my but my one to one is on a one minute chart, but my uh, two to one or uh, three to one has to be on a five or fifteen minute chart. You have to figure that out and. My target was right here. So that would have been, let's see. That makes sense. Where's the short, right? If we shorted like on this drop, like right here, all right? The stop would have to be either at this fair value gap or above this fair value gap with this target to this target, right? So it's like a two to one, right? Just a little bit over two to one from right here. 
But if you're taking partial profits, look at that. I got scared. That's a one to one. That's not great. You got to fix your strategy. All right. And if you if you if 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 this hurts you a lot, then that means theta is hurting you a lot, right? So you got to figure out what contracts to get so you can operate your strategy the best way you can to go zone to zone, especially at the end of the day. If there was next day option, I would probably held it. This is zero DT. Yeah. See, but that's what you have to figure out. And that's why we have zone to zone. That's why none, none of this volume happened in between here. We start getting tight because the targets were so close to each other. This was the target we had to take out. We took it out and we just ran into the resistance right here. Right. And once we took out that target, we broke structure on a smaller time frame, but we also the EMAs crossed. It seemed to signifying that we're in a downtrend. Right. So, and then we ended up going down all the way with the volume being significantly higher on the way up than down than on the way up. You see the plane pick up? <laughs> yeah, so you know what I'm saying? Like, that was crazy. That was crazy. So, oh, so set your levels, set your targets, which are just swing lows. Intraday is swing lows are your targets. And uh, uh, your gap fills are your daily type of, like, where you want to, what do you want to do at the morning and in and, and, and the evening, right? So, for example, one more thing I'll share before. This is the one I missed. I was too busy looking at it and freaking spy and whatever cues but you see how we had support right here and then we had this trend line break right here uh we do we have a gap to fill right here we have this gap to you see this gap right here the closing yeah. price. we'll make it market in blue we we opened right here we filled the gap and guess what we did right we that's broke up we, bro that's all we needed this is the Disney call that I missed because look at support, 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 gap fill leads to taking profit because that's people's targets. We yeah. shoot up. Okay. Shoot up. So um, I like to mark out my, uh, I put it in green. If I, if there's no clear fair value gaps, I do it kind of how Raj does it where you just see the, the wicks and the rejections. Uh, if there's no fair value gaps. If there's fair value gaps, then I mark them out in blue or block or supply zones. So I mark them out in gray. So you can kind of color code um, your indicators, but don't trade off indicators, right? Don't trade, a, oh, I saw uh, it cross. I saw the price break below the EMAs. I got in and then it reversed on me. I got puts right here and then reversed. You have to make sure you, it aligns with your uh, support resistance levels. That's why Raj was really showing it, how he creates his zone. So how do you create your zone might be a little different, but he's trying to give you an idea of what you can maybe work with and like how he uses it. So maybe you could follow along when he's when he's dropping ES, you know, 10 contracts on ES puts. <laughs> MES puts, my bad. You know. So yeah. turn off all your indicators until after you till after you chart. You know what I mean? So uh you guys can uh use it right when you have your conviction you're like oh okay we're at support now i'll turn it on oh it's crossing and we're bouncing because yeah. sometimes you have so many indicators you can't even see the candles anymore exactly. right oh that's what it's about bro the candlesticks uh but one thing that i do have though is this thing which is the uh um shows you the uh time frame continuity uh you know if none of that made sense to you on, bro. Yeah, I got none of this made sense to you the one thing i want you to take away from it is that if you look right here, right? That's why I always tell Raj lately, I was like, hey, let's wait for that candle, that hourly candle to close. Because look at this. When this hourly closes, right? Because let's just take, for example, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll wait, right? So if it's 940 right here, right? 945, how many candles, uh, how many five minute candles do you have to get to hit 10 o'clock, right? Three. So you just have to wait three more candles so you can it, it changes this color of the hourly so you want to get the hourly the 30 to 15 minutes to align with the five minutes so you get one two three wow you see this now the hourly is inside red right what 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 is it inside what does inside red mean well, actually it's wow. not red. I it's actually outside that. red this is the outside red <laughs> this is the red down actually so we'll go to the five minutes i think it's just glitching right now it's just a it's just a red down. There we go. It's just a red down. Because in order for this hourly to be uh green, price has to be above where we opened. So if we're above here, this hourly will be green. So we go, we'll go one, 
5, 10, 15. So this new 15 minute candle, right? New 15 minute candle. In order for this hourly to be green, the price has to be up here. But now this 15 minute is what, right here? So let's put that 15 minute close right here, okay? 5, 10, 15. Do we have full time frame continuity to the downside? This is glitching. So we'll just go 15 right here and then go back. All right. See, we have full time frame continuity to the downside. So that's what time frame continuity is. The, you're not looking for calls until price can break above here. Yeah. Does that make sense? So this is our resistance that aligns with the 15 minute red. This is the hourly red. And this is now the 30 minute red. So this 30 minutes is probably going to turn green real quick. So let's go 5, 10, 15. Hold on, let me just switch to the 30 and back because it always does that. So cool. I'm gonna put okay, that. so look at that. It's still full time frame continuity to the downside because this is where the 30 minute highs is. This is the fifth, yeah. the, well, this was the 15 minutes. This is probably the 45 minute high, but we don't have that. So we just delete this. All right. So until we can break above this, we're in a solid downtrend 5, 10, 15. All right. That's full time frame continuity, this whole entire move down. And that's the thing that you guys have to understand. It, that's the one thing I want you guys to take away with understanding where we are at the hour, the 30 minutes, 15 minutes. Those are what matters, right? So vice versa, if you kind of come on the way up, right, we're coming up, right? Hourly is up, 30 minutes is up, right? So this is, uh, actually, let's do a seven o'clock. This is where we, we get a reversal. I want to see you guys see a reversal. So 655 right here. All right, we open, let me just go 15 and back. It always has, it always does this. Okay, so we opened right here. This should be, this should be green, but I don't know. All right, so, but anyways, um, five and 10. So this is a new hourly, all time frame down. It's still red until guess what? And so we, we actually open up here, huh? This is where we open. So this hourly, once we get above that, all right, we got the 30 minutes now, and now we got the hourly. So now we're looking for, for bounces to go to the upside because we understand where the trend is. Like obviously, you know, it has to align with your support resistance, but under, that's understanding the trend, right? Boom. At this point now, we have full time frame continuity to the upside. Okay, you see how the reversal. So it's important to wait after uh, uh, if you're like if it's like six forty five Pacific time or seven fifty Pacific time, and you don't know uh, what where to get into a trade. You got to wait till the hour closes, just so we can kind of get an idea of hey. Usually at the hour, we actually reversed right here at the midline. Right, we reversed at the midline of yesterday, so now we can actually look for calls as soon as we hit full time frame continuity to the upside. Yeah, so I'm putting this over my eyes. I am. <laughs> I'm putting this. Back. I'm doing. I'm literally doing it right now. I'm putting it back on the chart and keeping it. Back. Does that make sense? Does that yeah, make sense? Back is over my eyes, like big time. So I just want to kind of give you guys a little bit of tools. I don't want to overwhelm you guys with, with too much detail, but when you hear full time frame continuity, you don't know what that means. That's what it means. All right, where did we close? Where did we close? All right, this is the five minute ten. The next one, 15, all right? So this is where all, the green candle and there's a red candle, so it has to be the top of it. And so we're to the top of it, we're bearish. Boom, 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 okay? We're below this, okay? So, yep, that was that was uh, what I wanted to share, time frame continuity. Damn, bro, that is so fire. I am, I'm putting that back, I'm putting that on my chart right now. Hold on. I have... Uh, I had that, but I just used it to look at the APR for the day. Yeah, just make it uh make it a favorite. Um, and on your phone, you probably uh you probably you have to come down here. This is one thing I forgot to share last time. On your phone, you have to make it tiny, otherwise it'll take up a big screen. Oh like, shit! And make it tiny because on your phone is too big. Um, and the cool thing about it, uh, Raj, is that you can choose your SMA or EMA. Yeah. And you can yeah you can choose uh, VWAP as well all of this together. And I do high lows of yesterday and the midline, the 50 fib of yesterday. You can do the six one up or six one down, but I just do the 50 just so I can let us know that, hey, we're breaking yesterday's midline. We have the hourly, the daily, 
the 30 and just the weekly but the weekly doesn't really matter i mean it kind of does maybe like on um like monday tuesdays if you want to see for an uptrend or downtrend yeah um, so i just have it there but the you, you want to at least do 30 15 uh, thir uh hourly 30 15 uh, hourly 30 15 yeah i'm putting that i'm doing it right now yeah because when you're because i usually trade like on but i don't know if you could use it on the three minutes that's the only problem let's see um, we'll see oh yeah you can use it on three minutes yeah you can use it in three minutes because on the one minute on the one minute it does it like it doesn't really i don't think it shows on the one minute see so it doesn't show on the one minute really but when you're on the three minutes it'll, it'll show you okay I'm, I'm doing my there's a lot to this the scratch oh it has the um it has everything here yeah you can do uh previous high low high lows which is i which i do you can do the weekly highs the weekly lows they'll mark it for you but sometimes too many lines uh, too too sloppy for me it has the highlight pattern that has the one three and the three one that's the nirvana. oh yeah let's do one three and three ones right here so we'll, we'll highlight that it just that we have 30 minutes bro can we, can we, can we, that's i'm really trying to learn those bro the the, the one three and the three one um, that's the uh that's the strap pattern i want to learn the most because it fits in my supply and demand zones uh i think just it should just be the two twos two twos uh because the threes they rarely have i mean let's let's find out let's find out how many how often do the threes you see threes well, that's right, the thing because they're so rare. The ones. Yeah, well, because they're so rare, I want to add. I wanna, I'm just trying to learn, like, what do okay. they mean? The one, the three, three, the one. I know you talked about it last time, too. So. Yeah. Um. So this is a. This, these are threes. I just turn on just the threes alone, so you can see them. Right. We have engulfing at, um, at the 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 highs right here engulfing, but then we get a bearish engulfing. All right, bullish engulfing. Usually we want to see like a continuation. So this is the three, two, two. You see? Because these are uh two up and then we broke the highs. Two that's up. A, that's a two, one, three right there. Where that three, so two. No, this is a two. This is a two, two, and then a oh, failed two, and okay, it turns three, into a three. Okay, I didn't see that right there. That's yeah, so this this is a failed two. So we because we took out the high, uh, we took out the lows first, and it looks like it was gonna be like a bear flag. And then it just shot up. And that's the reason why I don't like uh, uh, ones because on ones they're always so small that you can. This happens more often where we break both sides. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, let's try to find. Uh, but yeah, so three. You see how we get a three and then a continuation and a three and then a continuation and three and a continuation. Yeah. Right. So that's why on the daily. What do we have right now? Right oh shit the three so i'm thinking but we have support right here but we might get a three two two continuation that takes us down here and you know try to find some type of support down here wow right. so the, yeah that's why i like i, I just use it kind of just to explain explain it but um but yeah on, on top of that I, I, what you call it on cues i think the the other before there was a uh that was like a two 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 reversal let me see let's turn on the strat two down two up and then the one song right yeah sometimes on the on the bigger time frames you can see oh right here on the bigger time frames if you see this this is a go you see how we get this uh this doji on a four hour time frame on a two up yeah right? so this is the easy this is the main strat uh strat strategy is that when you see a uh morning star evening star at support or resistance you want to play a break of this. So at, at the one point we came up here. So until the strat people are saying like, once you have break aside, that's a direction that you can enter. So we didn't do anything until we broke down. So you enter a two and your target is right here. So that is the, the strat strategy. So if you see morning star, evening star, is, this is a two, two reversal right here. That's why I like two, two reversals because you, like three sometimes are, are, are indecision candles and like ones like right here, three, one. This is like not not what you want to play with three ones, right? But the three two continuation, right, is what I like because that means there was a strong rejection of this high, which is a liquidity sweep, right? And then we broke this low. So what is the target? This low right here. I see. All right, because this is like some type of PMG type um setup, but the actual definition of PMG is like one candle has to take out at least like four but only takes out one two three three targets 
So that's why uh, threes are liquidity sweeps and like uh, some type of broadening formation as well, uh, depending on the time frame. So if you have like an hourly, let's try to find a three. It, it's, a, it's mainly, it's kind of like a broadening formation. So um, you would take this right here. We got a two, three. Sometimes people do it like this. Yeah, it would have to be like this. And then, yeah, like a people would start the, to the three like this. You see? You see how we rejected right there? Yeah. So this is how people play. Like these are this is false breakout because we're at resistance, right? But once we hit the resistance right here, guess what? Our target could be all the way down here. All right. We, our target could be all the way down here. So just an idea how how this, people use the strat and stuff, but this is not a strat class, so I don't want to take up too much of uh, the. That's fine. We're, we're just picking it now. I got twenty minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So <laughs> hope everybody's following along. Is this uh, you get, is this interesting? Is it make sense? <laughs> if anything doesn't make sense, let us know. Yeah. Learn this to learn, man. Okay, I'm trying to. Yeah, we're really hard to learn though. So. Why do they call it? Why are there names for it? So the one three is Nirvana and the three one is the Holy Grail. Why are uh, there <laughs> it's not. It, I mean, it's it's honestly what your 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 setups. Uh, it's it's what you want to do. Um, I don't know why it's called Nirvana. Um, but you know the typical. This is the one three and three ones. Um, but the ones. So the yeah the one the three one is basically. Um, Actually, so break was, both sides the previous candle. Then it yeah, goes. that's basically breaking both sides. So this is the goal on bigger time frames. You see, how, like right here, where this is a two one two uh, reversal. This is a we coming down. This is the inside bar. As soon as you break the high of this, that's why the previous day I always mark out and I was like, hey, it's a daily two up because that means we broke the whole day, and our target is, um, the the day before is high. But that that doesn't like that doesn't have to happen in this next candle. It could be a, a two one two two continuation, because if you're on like the fifteen minutes, like it'll take. Sometimes you'll see a big candle. It'll take a while for it to take the top out. That's why I use the fifty fib, right? That's why I use the fifty fib to let me know if we're gonna. Um, let's try to find a fifty fib that was broken. Like we're in a downtrend until not too many examples, All right? For sometimes for individual candles, if we're grinding up and then we're we're up here, which is actually the uh, strategy that you had. Um, was it yesterday? I think yesterday, right? We had a slow grind up right here. Um, is there a yeah. fifteen candle? Ah, uh, thirty minute candle. The 30 minute candle actually shows you the 2 2 reversal right here. But once we break this 50 fib right here, you see, let me, uh, I'll just take out the 6.8. You see the 50% mark right here? Yeah. Okay, of this candle. All right, we had a huge rejection here. As soon as we close breaking the 50 fib on the smaller time frame, your target is to take out this high. You see? Yeah. Because we closed above. You could even do on the five minutes too. This five minute candle was a huge, huge candle. That's why I do the 50 fifth break because we get a close and a break. And then there's some type of support resistance that are, are helping your strategy out. RSI breaking back up, volume picking up. Then our target is to get to here. And that's why once we hit our target, we start getting smaller. All right, so. That's just a, a, a that's why we have to use multiple candles and stuff. You didn't find this 2-2 reversal until we hit the 30 minutes. Sometimes that's why a lot of stratters have like the 45-minute time frame, the four-hour, the two-hour, just so they can try to see a huge 2-2 reversal somewhere. Like this is a 2-2 reversal here within like the tweezer tops. Let's see how it looks like on the 30 minutes, right? This is a 2-2 reversal on the 30 minutes. But if you're stuck on the five minutes, right, you just see a bunch of small candles. 15 yeah, minutes, yeah. Really right? So the 15 minutes was nice and the 30 minutes both painted a doji indecision. So how do you play that? You play a break here and your first target is here and we hit it, you see? 
And then once it's a two two reversal, and then what is this? This is the new low. Once we we up here, we break that. This is a two two continuation. But then the strap people would have their targets right here, right? And then liquidity, which is right here. Okay, so you have to have you have to have targets in between. So a break. This is a two two reversal with a two two continuation. Target target all hit. So the thing that helps me most though is just try to find just find morning star evening stars as support resistance. We got a two two reversal here, right? And did we hit our targets? The first target is here. We do, and then the next one would be here, and we do. Anything else is just like that's just a huge move, right? You want to get target closer targets, close range targets, especially on these time frames. That makes sense. Oh yeah. Yeah. So and this freaking this whole time frame caught you. That's definitely been missing in my in my strategy. I have it up now. I just I set it up. I'm gonna. Oh, I'm so excited to use it. These are gaps that have tomorrow, bro. What? Are you doing a class tomorrow? Well, I was just hoping that uh, we can just combine our classes today. And then, oh, okay. uh, let me just stop the recording real fast. That was a great class. Thanks, everybody. Um, oh, yeah, thank you for joining us, everyone that joined today. Um, Wait. Yeah, because uh, I was going to. Oh, was already the recording ended, I think, when you switched? Oh, no, I don't think so. I don't even know how to end the recording unless you close it. I hope it I hope it did but that's that sucks if we didn't maybe we can have another <laughs> class um that's a good class yeah. that's fine that was fun I like yeah, the volume the volume shows the freaking full time frame continuity of the game changer just now like seriously that 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 just opened my eyes yeah like see like right here you don't see anything here right you don't see anything here on this time frame exactly all right so that's, that's why strat people they switch time frames. So let's try to find something on a different time frame. 45 minutes. Do we see anything here? All right. We got a two one. This is a two one two. You see this two one two? Yeah. Well, two one. Okay, there. Let me move it to above. Sometimes it's harder to see above. All right. We got a two one two. So this is how people would play it. Um, two one two, right? We play a break here, the next candle, and target is here. That's it. So we had to find that through the forty five minute time frame. Let's see how the hourly look like. See, hourly shows you nothing, right? Two one two, maybe, but not really. Forty five minutes. You want to find these smaller candles because it's easier to break. Right here, there's nothing. Let's try to see if we find it in the fifteen minutes. Nothing. Five minutes. That's really the right here, right? I'm gonna find these huge tweezer two uh two one two. This is the two one two morning star. Play it to right here. We got our targets. Yeah, look at that. That led us right to our everybody go. So you so you're just trying to find it on multiple uh time frames. Yeah. But we have to have your support resistance levels. You got to have your support resistance levels first, just so we know that, hey, I just because this is a 2-2 two, two continuation at one point, I'm not going to look for calls. But what I see is a 2-2 two, two reversal potential. You see three wicks right here at resistance. So you would play a break here, right? And then you your target, first target right here, depending on, that's a 10 cent move. You could hold it because you have confirmation right here. That's your yeah. target, all right? And then, yeah, and then we have a gap to fill down here that we didn't fill yet, and we filled it right here. So you could have played a 2-2 reversal to take you to the gap fill, and you see how people immediately start buying it up right away. Mm. But the reason why I don't have my my strat numbers on right now uh, all the time is because sometimes it's just too much clut clutter. Yeah. So uh, what I would do is, like, I would um, maybe have, like, a separate, um, a separate screen. Where I'm maybe trading in. Let's uh, let's make this solid, and I'll have um, this one um, be on let's say the five minutes or something, and then this one be like on a bigger time. I'll be like swiping uh, it's like to find the the setups, uh, and then but keeping this on my regular trading time frame. 
the, the five minutes and I'll have like this on the 15 or the, the hourly and I'll wait for the hourly candle to close. So let's say, or we, let's just fast forward to present day. Fast forward to present day. We see this 2-2 two -two reversal, right? Let's find a better one. Or what we found on the 30, right? The 30. Sorry, this 2-2 two -two reversal. So I'll mark it out right here. And then present day, it would be marked out when we break this structure. You see, on the five minutes, this is where it was, right? Mm. So this is the two. So we're all hanging out right here. As soon as we break, we break, we actually break and close right here. So I would actually get it right here. Um, then we can we can target. Let's see. This would be the first one, right? How how many how much would you make from from just this break right here to right here? This is sixty six cents on spy. Is that not enough for you? That's a huge move on a two two reversal in this thirty minute time frame, right? And this yeah. took us what five ten fifteen minute. It was a fifteen minute trade to make sixty six cents, right? So that's that's good. Because usually what people want is like 45, 50 cents if you're scalping, but you can capture that move. So um, let's find this one right here, right? This 2-2 two, two reversal right here on this 30 minutes. Target is right here. And guess what? When we had our time frame continuity, right? It broke right here. So right here is what? 25? Do we have we have time frame continuity already, right? Let me just get rid of this EMAs. We had time frame continuity. Make it bigger, sorry. It was bullish. So what would we need this? We need this huge wick to be a two-two reversal. And so once we break it, right now we're in this trade and our target is right here. Right. Right there. So how much is this move? Let's measure it. We'll say we let's say we yeah, we got in here. Got it right here. That's a dollar forty three cents. Right. Mm. But let's say you want to be safe and you want to make sure we close above this fair value gap. About sixty cents, right? Oh, what the heck? We close above this fair value gap. Yeah, 65 cents. But that's what you want when you're trading SPY. All right? Or you can go zone to zone, depending on what your contract is. Um, that takes you from, you trust this. But a lot of times, if you have such a huge wick like this, um, it's tough to have a, to kind of decide what your stop loss is. I guess, actually, no. I'll take that back. Let's say we long in, right? Because we see a 2-2 reversal breaking here, right? Yeah, see, so my your stop loss would have to be at the, some type of support. This is the fair value gap support. Um, or if you play a break up here, right, to the target, your stop loss would be, um, I guess, below close below the zone. So you kind of have to figure out what the ratio is that is that matches uh, what you're trying to get if you want 66 cents 67 cents for a one-to-one -one ratio but you get your stop losses at close below the support which is also another intraday fair value gap that was created right here a fair value gap right here this is your support so once we break out of here or you could play a break here early if you play a break here early right let's say you're longing a break here some people's stops have to be like below this this candle right here all right and you would have to kind of target this so this is still one to one one to one ratio but that's why if this is the case where you got in and the swing is is significantly further then that's why you have to buy your contracts out the next day or next week but if you're playing that puts uh like from up here then you can do a tight stop loss all right you got a two two right here at the top all right let's fast forward on um, right here get us to that spot right here right we break right here um shorting it all right we short on the break and close right here we're shorting it 
our stops are above, there's a fair value gap here, so it can just be above right here. And where our target was, what was our target? The swing low, just the, the zone. You see how we can have a better risk to reward. And then this next one is all the way like right here. So right here. And then that volume shelf breaks. Yeah, then 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 you can get that. Then you get that five to one risk to award ratio. Yeah, I mean, so that's why it's, this is a little bit of a chase. That's why I, I when we're trading live with Raj, I was like, I'm not going to get calls right here because the, the risk to reward is it can, it can, it can run into this area and then come right back down. When we're up here, if it stops me out, it stops me out, but I have more, more targets I can take out. I got a target here. I got a target here. I got a target here, here, and then all the way down here. All right. And that's what ends up happening is all the targets were taken out and we went to the gap uh, towards the gap. So yeah, that's just the, the main thing in the strategy. Just, that's why I always try to find just these actionable signals, the twos and the, the two, two reversals. Um, the threes are usually like continuations unless you're running into a huge resistance area. Then we'll get a three, two, but see three, twos are all, threes are just like ones though. They're indecisions a little bit. Um, see three, three right here, nothing, right? Three here, nothing. Let's try to find a better time frame for a three. I don't want to cheat that process. Let's find a better three. Let's see three continuation, three, two, two. See, three just means that we just failed down here. So I, I like it more for continuations than, than um, reversals. But this is a three, two, uh, three, three, one, one reversal, three, two, two. This is a three, two, two. See, so this is what we could get on SPY, where we get a three down and then two green, two down, and then two up. Let's try to find. But yeah, let me see. Let's try to find one more. Uh, three. A three, one, uh, three. Here's a three, two reversal right here. All right, with the tweezer tops. Tweezers toss when we, we clean break a clean liquidity sweep. We break here. A strong close. All right, our targets would probably be this swing low right here, which we wake from that next day. Because this, yeah, after that, this, these are just, these are after hours, pre market hours. So, um, yeah. So I hope that helps. But uh, yeah, if you want more strat um, combination, if you have any strat, strat questions, feel free to ask them. But yeah, we got this three, but that's why we got a three one right here. Um, it might be a three one two continuation, three one three. So a three one three, or, or what I'm thinking it could be, right, is that we come down, we take out this, this target right here. And then we could get a three one three, and then a three two two continuation coming right back up. If we close above here, the fifty percent of this this four hour candle, eventually, like if we get this candle and then we get a strong close like this, the next one, then I'm expecting us to come all the way back up, just this close above this fifty percent of this candle, because that would mean that this this top is the target. So. Yeah. Hope that helps. No, nah, I do. I got. I got this guy. I have to work on uh, just drawing my, drawing my levels first. Get yeah, to draw it. your levels. Try. Like that's why. Like there's strat traders now that do fair value gaps and stuff, right? This is like the fair value gap that I have right here, right? Fair value gap from here. We see some tweezer tops right here. Um, is this a three? This is a two, right? But we have this uh um this fair value gap. So right here is where you want to you want to make a trade is that you see this rejection right here right and we see another three bar i think that's a three right a three at resistance so we could potentially look for a smaller time frame short right here right a three this is a three down at resistance uh gap fill here fair value gap down here let's see what happens Another three down. We gotta chop up a little bit. And then we 
Let's see how it looks like on the, what is the hourly that we saw was three? Three down, three, one, two, two, continuation. Let's see, let's go back to the 15 minutes, five minutes. This one kind of chopped a lot that day. Let's see. Back up. See, back at resistance, right? Let's see, we get one more resistance. Come on, give me one more. So if you play the hourly, that hourly three down, actually, I think that could have still been valid because if you had time on this, you get a three, but it really didn't break though. If you get a three, one, you can't trade it, right? But if you get a three, two, you could trade it because you play a break of the three and then you could target here, but we never broke here and closed. And so right here, we get a three, two, three, two. Let's say if you were to play this short on a break, Three, two, short on the break. Your top would have to be above, close above this candle. And your first target would be like right here. It's not that great of a risk to reward, but that's why you want to like get multiple time frame analysis. I think we, all right there, we came yeah. right down. <laughs> you see that? A close above here. We never closed above here, but we got a three, two, uh, well, a three, two right here. We kind of pulled back heavy, didn't close, and we came all the way down. You see, so that's just how, how you use a strat because we established that now we had a market structure shift, right? We had a lower, a close, but a lower, a new lower low. So now we've made a lower high. So we're looking for puts until we take this out. And we did. So there's a lot that goes into it. You know, as soon as like, I, that's the one thing I realized is as soon as I figured out one new indicator, I was like, oh, this is cool. And then like, I would try to force that indicator to work. But then I realized I need to know market structure first. I need to know support resistance first. I need to know. And then all these indicators start making more sense to you. Gap fills makes more sense to you. Right. So. Yeah. Raj, you got anything to say? Oh, bro, that's it for me, man. Thank you for uh, thank you for opening my eyes to that full, to that full time for continuity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the time my chart. I saved it as a template and everything from right now. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, one thing to take away is that, yeah, like once you, it's, it's better to um, establish these types of support resistance levels. So you can have the people who are actually swing traders and like long-term traders is that when you have this market structure shift and you have an entry, your people stops are above the whole entire swing high. It seems crazy because it's like, what, like three bucks, but then they're going for swing. Like they're going for the next swing low. Like that's how you get the, the three to ones, the five to ones. But if you're trading in between here, then in between, in between like big zones, you can't have a big, um, a big, uh, you, your stop loss would be too far away. Yeah. You know, that's why like, uh, unless you're using moving averages as your stop or, you know, but if you want to have the capture of these whole moves, your, your, your stop loss has, has to be on top of this whole entire range. Exactly. That's the only way. So if I'm entering like a higher low right here, for calls, like my stop loss would have to be, if I'm entering calls right here, my stop loss would have to be like below here. See, that's what, yeah, bro, that's exactly, that's how when I trade, right, I always try to get in a spot where if I'm wrong, I can just flip because that's a spot where like, yeah, that's a spot. Where if it breaks, it's, it's put, if, it's, if it holds, it's long. But the reason why sometimes people put their stop losses right here, because this is a swing low, that's why you see double bottoms where this low wicks below here and it goes up, which is called the liquidity sweep. So if we, if we break below here and wick and come up, it took people out of their stop, their contracts. That's just, it took them out of the stop loss because my stop loss is just below here. It touches it, takes their contract, and then runs, runs with them. A double bottom, a double top. That's what it is, right? That's why a double top, I, I would prefer, or a double bottom or a double top, I would prefer it to, to, to take the lows of a previous um a previous high so right here right this is a double top right so it takes people if people are getting puts and they haven't got out right let's say you get puts like right here or something and you're targeting this this like this swing low right here for example and it never got to your target like it's it's, it's taking you out of your contracts right at at the top here because this is this is the stop loss 
So it's taking you out of your contracts because people put, and then you see puts worked in there. So they stole your contracts and write, wrote some puts and they, <laughs> but that's the double top, double bottom is that it has to be a little higher. It sweeps liquidity so it can come down. It takes people's contracts and comes down. But if it never does, right? It like the here and here, it, and it, this is not a liquidity sweep, right? So eventually it's going to try to sweep liquidity in order to get that, that move that you want. Trying to give a better example than that, though. Oh, it's not that great. Um, let's try five minutes real fast. All right, last one. Do we sweep liquidity right here? All right. We have this low sweep. All right, let's try to find a better double, double top, double bottom. Oh, right here. This is a perfect one. So uh, yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. Like you, uh, we have this low right here and then we have this trend line right here. So if you're playing trend line breaks, if you're playing trend line breaks. Um, this is more of a valid trend line break, at least to, to scalp to the upside, but we have this order block right here, but this is more valid to scalp on the way up and you, you feel comfortable holding because right here is we, we swept liquidity. This is sell side liquidity. We swept it. So the next higher low, you feel comfortable holding. But if it never did, then it, all these liquidity needs to be taken out because all of these are considered um, liquidity right here. So this low was never taken out. All right, this low and this low was never taken out. So they're all targets. And then when they accumulate like this, like this low wasn't taken out, right? So now we took them all out. So guess what? We have all this to the upside, all these highs that we're not taking out and we took them out. You see, that's why these wicks are when it's like slow grinding days, it's just creating a bunch of liquidity for a huge candle to take them all out or it to slowly grind the other way. That's why trend line breaks are trend line breaks because they're all considered liquidity that needs to be swept. All right. Let's see another other oh, Disney was a trend line break, right? This is a trend line break. We have wick, wick. They're all not taken out. And then you can even pull this all the way to here, right? It's, that's trend line. This is a huge trend line. And once we broke, they're they're all taken out. They're all taken out, right? This is the high, the, the pivot high. We took it out. And guess what? Took it out, bounce higher low. And we continue further. So understand that in order for this trend line to be more valid, oh, shoot. In order for this trend line to be more valid, we have to sweep liquidity. And we swept it right there. We actually swept here too. This is a previous day low. If you want, if you don't have your after hours or pre-market off, we still swept liquidity. So this trend line break is more valid. Okay. So that's it. That's it. On my end. Beautiful. Oh, shoot. The Jake Paul fights right now. Oh, it's right now. I'm going to tour it. I'm going to watch tomorrow. You know, watch that thing. Oh. But yeah, so uh, yeah, I forgot to tell everybody who was on eight, nine people here earlier. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys for kicking it with us, man. They told me Saturday learning about, how, yeah, learning about, learning about stocks and stuff, learning about how to do charts. This is this, this is what's going to, you know, this is some life changing stuff right here. And yeah. I'm always I'm always a fan of the people that show up on a Saturday, you know, because I know there's a ton of other things that you can be doing on a Saturday. But if you're in here learning about the stock market, that's good. That's the, you know, that's the difference maker right there. That's what's going to change your life. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it's, it's a it's like a never ending learning process too. So uh, the market's always changing. The news is always changing until you've actually gone through multiple cycles of FOMC and earnings and stuff. Uh, that's when you start under like start seeing patterns happen like a lot and a lot more frequently like oh volume's low on fridays right before right or, or people buy the news or you know sell the, sell the news right by the hype so the you have to kind of see it in real time in, in order to start making sense and stuff so then after that you start realizing hey i don't trade anything unless it's exactly my setup and so you can figure that out is when you can actually optimize your trading strategy and, and instead of just hopping and, and hoping 
Uh, and then, yeah, you'd be very specific with your entries. I only enter at, at, at resistance when it's a 2 2 reversal exactly. or a 3 2, right? Remember, so. Yeah, remember, guys, there's the, yeah, uh, when this is to say take one strategy, you know, and make, you know, the, the, the best way to do it is learn about as many, as many things as you can and come up with a, come up with a setup on your own. Like the point of these classes is to just say, you know, take my trading style or take, you know, take, you know, do this. It's to, you know, it's for you to learn all these different methods of trading and come up with something on your own. Like I learned about the fib, the supply and demand, and the volume, and those like those that, those. That's my combo. For you, it could be the RSI, um, you know, the EMAs or whatever. You know, BW's got the, the fair value gaps, the the six one eight Fibonacci and the point five, um, and above all, support and resistance and market structure. That's yeah, yeah. That's the first thing you have to learn: support, resistance, and market structure. Yeah, I, above I, all, multiple time frames. You know, market yep. structure shifts. Yeah. So things like that, things like that, gap fills, a lot of gaps to fill. That's why I think Meta is so bearish. Meta has so many. Look at all the Meta gap fills. <laughs> There's like a million oh, of them, oh, right? We have not filled all of these. Oh, all the way at 278, that's like a $40 move. And you think that's ridiculous, it's not, because I thought Tesla drop was ridiculous, right? But it's not. You see, we had this, we had this um, rising wedge into resistance. Yeah. Right? And then what is, like, how far was that move? Let's see from this low, right? So here, that was like $39. Beautiful. <laughs> 39 bucks and I almost hit it actually hit the psych level 300 right here right 299 298 oh wow 30 bucks yeah. so is it is it on you like is it unrealistic for spy to drop 30 bucks nah it's not definitely not we can still be in an uptrend bro there's so many things we can hit we still be holding the uptrend so yeah the only issue though is if we come and break this low right here that's a market structure shift on the on the daily time frame and, and then we create the head and shoulders and we come all the way down here. That's a problem too. Hey, I'll right. take I'll take that problem, bro. I'm kind of I missed the rally on this on options. I got some shares, but on options, like I should have been loading up leaps, bro. I should have been loading up leaps. Yeah, but you got you got a couple leaps, so that's cool. Oh, You're yeah, building yeah, a portfolio. Yeah, we're good. Uh, I'm getting more. I'm gonna I'm waiting for this pullback. <laughs> yeah so we'll be we'll be ready and uh yeah we'll have our levels so if you guys are still learning levels you guys tune in on wednesday for what an hour and a half hour and then friday yeah, about an hour oh yeah that's right uh, so yeah we'll be live training this wednesday like that. wednesday yeah wednesdays and fridays um yeah. you can probably catch some moves but a lot it's gonna be a lot of waiting because as as easy as you can see this in hindsight is this took like a whole hour for this to, to set up and then a whole yeah. two hours three hours for this to set up and yeah. then you can capture like a you want to capture 66 cents or a dollar move like that's your goal 66 cents or a dollar move um and if, if you could simplify as like that then you'll be like oh i could get 60 cents easy yeah you guys look mad yeah and the, yeah our dms are always open too if you ever if you ever have any questions about any of this stuff put us up you know um we're here to help we're definitely yeah <laughs> All right, for sure. Yeah, for understand the, pro, uh, the struggle. Yeah, let's get out of here. I'm going to uh, get on this call and then I'm going to be ready to work. All right, everybody. Thanks for hopping on. Appreciate it, Raj, for that, that beginning half of the class. It's amazing. Oh, yeah, no problem, man. It was fun beginning with you guys. Hey, how are we going? All right, guys. Take it easy. Yeah.